clinical deficiencies of B vitamins, severe enough to result in diseases such as beriberi or pellagra, are luckily extremely rare nowadays in our post-industrialized countries. However, mostly because of our large consumption of refined grains and grain products instead of their whole counterparts, marginal deficiencies of B vitamins are quite common in many segments of the population. Most of the symptoms are very aspecific. Fatigue, energy emptiness, feeling tense and nervous, sleep disturbances and a hard time getting up in the morning, difficulties in learning, concentration and memory. There are, however, some little signs and symptoms that should make us suspect marginal deficiencies of one or more B vitamins. Let's start with our tongue. B vitamin deficiencies often affect the tongue color. From pink, it becomes bright red, magenta, or purplish. Taste buds, normally small and uniformly distributed, become enlarged at first, and then they shrink until they are not visible anymore. The edge of the tongue is not smooth, but it shows marks and indentations left by the teeth. The tongue surface is not smooth either, but has fissures, at first a big vertical fissure right in the middle, then all over its surface. If B vitamin deficiency persists, these fissures eventually disappear and the tongue becomes completely smooth. Not the silky smoothness of a healthy tongue, but a totally flat and shiny surface, oftentimes also swollen and sore. Let's move on to the lips. The landmark signs of B vitamin deficiency, and particularly B2, is angular chelitis, painful cracks at the corner of the mouth that reopen every time we open our mouth wide. Before it comes to that, small vertical fissures of the lower lips are also a sign of B vitamin deficiency. The lower lip becomes dry and flaky, the upper lips instead become smaller. In many older adults, as a result of years of marginal vitamin B deficiency, the upper lip has almost completely disappeared. Let's now look at the eyes. Vitamin B deficient individuals are very sensitive to intense daylight. Out in the bright light, they are more comfortable wearing sunglasses. In contrast, they have a hard time seeing in dim light. They are often the first to turn on the light as the sun sets. I realized my mom was B deficient when in the afternoon she would keep asking me why I was reading in the dark, when actually I could still perfectly read without any effort. B deficient individuals often rub their eyes and sometimes feel as if they had sand or dust grains under their eyelids. With a prolonged deficiency, in the white part of the eyeball, little capillaries start to form, easily detectable because of their red color, and often mistaken for high blood pressure. With more severe deficiencies, the same capillaries form in other areas of the face and body, under the eyes, around the ears, on the cheeks, the edge of the nose, or in severe cases such as the case of long-time alcoholics, all over the body. Losing a lot of hair is another typical sign of vitamin B deficiency. Losing some when washing or brushing our hair is normal, but if we wake up in the morning and our pillow is covered with hair, then something is wrong, and it may very well be a vitamin B deficiency. Muscle soreness, shortness of breath, palpitations, tingling or pins and needles sensation, or occasional difficulties in movement and coordination, as if our muscles were temporarily paralyzed, can be a very serious alarm bell for vitamin B12 deficiency. It is often complicated to pinpoint which of the B vitamins is deficient, but it's not very important for two reasons. First, most of the time deficiencies of many B vitamins occur together. Second, because of the way they work together in many metabolic pathways, it is generally discouraged to take large amounts of just one of the B vitamins by itself. The general rule with food as well as supplements is to never get just one of the B vitamins, but all of them at once. Remember that they are water soluble and with very low risk of toxicity. So if we take some of them in excess, we will just flush them out with our urine without any side effect. So what are the dietary strategies to get all of these precious vitamins? First and foremost, eating whole grains and whole grain products instead of their refined counterparts. 
You already know that the B vitamins are abundant in the bran and the germ, both of which are removed with refining processes. Besides a high intake of refined carb, increase utilization of some of the B vitamins, so you get less and you also use more at the same time. Regularly eating whole wheat bread, whole wheat pasta and whole flour products, brown rice, whole kernel corn and other unrefined cereals including barley, oat and rye ensures a stable and significant intake of the group B vitamins. Nuts, seeds and legumes are also good food sources of these vitamins. Some B vitamins, and in particular folate, are abundant in vegetables and particularly dark green and green leafy vegetables such as spinach, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, asparagus. Ideally, these vegetables should be eaten raw or quickly steamed and not stored for too long as folate is sensitive to light and heat. Group B vitamins are also well represented in foods of animal origin, milk and dairy, eggs, meat and fish. As you already know, vitamin B12 is a little bit different as it's an animal-only vitamin. It is mostly abundant in animals' liver, but it's present in all foods of animal origin. Instead, you will not find any vitamin B12 whatsoever in any plant foods, not occurring naturally, that is. However, small amounts of it are often present as a result of environmental, microbial, or fecal contamination. And it is mostly for this reason that strict vegans can go on for years without animal foods without incurring in B12 deficiencies. However, because its deficiency is a really serious problem and can go undetected until it's too late, vegans are encouraged to either take a B12 supplement or a B12 fortified food such as fortified breakfast cereal, B12 rich yeast or B12 rich algae or seaweeds, all products that are rich in vitamin B12 because of yeast or bacterial fermentations. If they really do not want to, they should at the very least check their B12 status periodically with blood tests. Our gut bacteria are also capable of building some of the B vitamins in our colon, and some of them can be subsequently absorbed and contribute to cover our needs. For this reason, it is wise to favor the selection of a healthy gut microbiota by regularly eating prebiotics, such as dietary fiber, and probiotics, such as fresh yogurt. Finally, there are three natural supplements of the group B vitamins, except for B12. These are dried brewer's yeast, wheat germ, and soy lecithin. I encourage you to make regular use of these natural sources of B vitamins, which also provide other precious vitamins and minerals, such as vitamin E in wheat germ and chromium in brewer's yeast.